Scorpio gang? Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. My name is Annie. We're going to read your tarot cards here today. This is a birthday bonus reading for Scorpio. Y'all know I love my Scorpio gang. Love all the signs, but I have a particularly fond spot for, uh, I'm just going to say my water signs in general. But <laughs> anyway, what's up, Scorp? Happy birthday. I hope you're having a good birthday season. If it's been crazy, if it's been turbulent, don't worry. It's not just you. We are nearing eclipse season and that um, South Node is uh, going to be in Scorpio, so it's going to be intense for all of us, but if there's anyone who can handle and survive and thrive in times of chaos, it is my Scorpio gang. Let's get you some messages on love, and if we have time, I will try and do finances as well. Um, let's see, for Scorpio, uh, general readings, guys, so come into it with an open heart, an open mind, only take away what resonates. Um, you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. Let's do it. Scorpio, looking for love, in love, any messages? Um, hopefully some high vibe messages in love. What can I tell my Scorpios? I'm being told to split the deck. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ooh, the sun. Beautiful way to start. The knight of wands. And the Seven of Wands. Okay, so fire anyone? <laughs> anyone dating a fire sign? Um, passion. A lot of passion with the Knight of Wands going on trips. Uh, something that feels um, like an adventure. Um, and, you know, maybe it, it does have to do with travel. It doesn't have to, but it's sort of this... This idea of feeling, I'm almost hearing like the idea of flight. It's like you've sort of lost touch with the ground. Um, I don't know if I love that message, but I'm going to stick with it because right now the messages seem to be very positive. You guys may have struggled with some opposition recently, but it seems like you're in the clear. Like whatever was sort of keeping you down or whatever it was you're fighting for, you have a new perspective on it. And I think you came out the winner or the victor. Um, so there's a couple messages. The first one being just really short and sweet that if you were really struggling with someone who lacked commitment, who was a bit of a player, who didn't want to stick around, but was maybe using you or something about that, it seems like you've sort of turned your back on it and you've illuminated yourself. You started loving yourself more and respecting yourself. And I think the universe is congratulating you for no longer sort of being the side piece or entangling yourself in a connection that didn't respect you. I, you know, nothing, no judgment if you're not looking for anything committed. That's not what this is about. This is about turning your back on sort of a player energy where you really struggled with it. It seems like maybe you were leaning into maybe more of a people-pleasing quality. And, and keep in mind, too, this could be at work. It doesn't necessarily have to be romantic, but I am reading for that. But someone who just, they kind of came in and out of your life when it was convenient for them, but never really checked in to make sure you were good or happy or nourished. It seems like this was an ongoing karmic uh, that you guys recently came out on top and you're like, I feel so much better. When I started to exert my own, um, or maybe assert is the right word, assert my own needs, my own power, my own energy that again, it, it wasn't coming from a place of bitterness or jealousy or venom. It's not that, it's just, I don't need this. Like, I don't have room for you in my life anymore because I'm happy doing me. I have more things to look forward to that are bringing me so much more joy than this. This seems like something, Scorpio, that it was more of a chore than it was. It was more or it was more of a chore or a burden than it was something pleasurable. I just want to put that out there. Happy message, though, is that you you've come out on top. It's almost like you've I don't know if graduated is a good term because it is a seven. But after some major assessment, you're, you're still turning away from it. You're like, yeah, I just I don't need that in my life anymore. If this doesn't make sense to you now, there could be something that comes back. And I don't want to use the word toxic X, but more or less, you guys get what I'm saying, right? There could be something that comes back to tempt you, temptation one more time. And yeah, it's like you're going to turn your back on it again out of this, this desire because it's like new buds are forming on this tree. Your passion, your action, your desires, they're just, this person doesn't fill your cup anymore. That's one message and it's beautiful and it feels very empowered and strong. So if you guys are sort of struggling with, well, should I text them back every time I do, I feel crappy about myself. Your answer is probably this. Uh, I would say, you know, honor, honor your self-respect first. Others of you, um, I actually really like this Knight of Wands. I think it's, um, I think it's really cheeky and fun, but I think it's very playful and flirtatious. So for those who are completely single and looking, you may have someone sort of coming in to offer you some flirtation. Um, the only thing I would offer to you here is if you are looking for love, then send the signals here. Um, because some of you may be really wrapped up in work or with your children, if you're you know, a single parent or something like that, where this may come in and knock on your door and this person may actually interpret your strong work ethic, which is great. They may actually interpret that as, oh, they're not interested and huh, well now what do I do? Because I, you know, I made this proposal to Scorpio and I don't, I don't necessarily mean marriage proposal, but you know, whatever. I made this offer to Scorpio and they seem to be like, yeah, I'll get to it when I get to it. 
you guys sort of, this is not a bad message at all. I actually love this message because it's very high vibe. You guys sort of seem to be wrapped up in your own projects and your own life right now. And that's great. I'm not telling you not to be. Um, but everything in moderation, right? You know, sometimes Scorpio can kind of swing into these like drastic or extreme um yes, obsessions, but I don't necessarily mean that in a bad way because whatever you're sort of throwing yourself into, it seems beautiful with the sun. It seems healthy. It seems happy. It seems creative. Um, but with that, make sure you take time to, you know, visit people you love or, or hang out and do this and that. Um, it doesn't have to be sort of this all or nothing. That's a, okay. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Thank you, spirit. It doesn't have to be this all or nothing of, oh, well, I'm doing this, so I don't have time for any of that. I think the universe is trying to get you to balance, to, again, to moderate your time, um, to not put all, all your eggs in one basket. I think that's important. Others of you, you seem intrigued by this flirtation, but you seem to be questioning it. Um, so I'm not, I think this might be someone new, but it doesn't have to be. You guys may have trust issues from the past of someone who kind of came in and was very flighty and noncommittal. And so you might sort of turn your back to this person. I don't know why I just feel like this person is actually offering you much more than you think. I mean, look at the size of this bird he's flying on. It's it's very big. Um, so he comes, he or she, sorry, I didn't mean to make it a gender thing. He or she comes in as the Knight of Wands. Like, they're very playful. They're very um, chatty. There might even be a, a slight element of immaturity here. But I actually think that they're riding in on something very steady. Um and this person may, may be, um, I am hearing the word foreigner, whatever that means to you. <laughs> like the band in the 1980s, foreigner. Um, they, this person may come from a different cultural or ethnic background from you, or there's something foreign about them. There's something, I don't want to say strange, that, that I feel like that has a negative connotation, but kind of unusual or different. Um, but I think it's intriguing. That's what I mean with the seven of wands. You're like, is there passion here? Like is, <laughs> I almost feel like you're sort of resisting what you feel because you're automatically assuming or jumping to the conclusion that this person has nothing to offer you. I don't think that's the case. This is like making me laugh because there's almost something here about like, what is this feeling? Like, is this, am I crushing on them? No, no, I'm not. That couldn't be like, you're, you're second guessing what you're, what your passion or your your intuition is telling you. I, you know, look at that. There's a lot of wand energy here. And I mean, I'm just going to say it. Of, of all the um, elements in, in the tarot deck, right? The pentacles, the swords, the cups, the wands. The wands are definitely the most passionate, the most driven, the most sexual, um, the most action oriented. So I don't know what you're looking for in this relationship, whether it's friendship or romantic or, uh, you know, friends with benefits, whatever it is. It is presenting with a lot of potential for this to grow into something else. I, I love the symbolism, too, of that, like, whatever this, you know, branch is, right, this wand, there's buds. There's something starting to bloom and blossom, and possibly unexpectedly. This could even be someone that you've known for quite some time, and with this, um, well, through eclipse season, which is going to last for, for a while, um, because it's happening in the sign of Taurus, which is where planet Uranus is sitting, Uranus, Uranus, however you say it, right? Um, shock, unexpected, awakenings. Sometimes it's very positive and very beneficial. It is because Taurus, the zodiac sign, opposes Scorpio. This could be someone who at one point in time you had like some sort of opposition or some sort of resistance or denial to see the passion or the feelings behind the offerings there. There might be a, a change of heart or a, a stroke of luck for one or both of you where you, I don't know, I almost get you actually start to catch feelings for them. And, and some of you are watching this going, oh my God, I would never. <laughs> like, that's what I mean. There's something very just like, yeah, no, it's not happening. And then you're like, oh my God, is it happening? Like, how did this happen? Why? Like that guy, that girl? I don't know. That's, that's cute. In fact, you know what? I'm going to keep that because I like it. Look at you with the wand energy. Going to reiterate, very likely someone who has strong fire placements. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be their sun sign. They could be an earth sign or a, a water sign, but it's very likely they have uh, a fire sign rising. Aries, Aries, Leo, Sag, or possibly a fiery moon or a fiery Venus. Um, literally, all I have is fire cards right now. The sun is typically indicative of Leo. And actually, that's probably a very important note to make, is that of all your cards, this is the one major arcana you have. It's sort of like a really heavy hitter of the tarot. 
and it is Leo energy. Um, and so if it's not a Leo you're dealing with, we can just kind of zoom out and talk about sort of the Leo energy. Leos are the entertainers of the Zodiac. There's a performance element to them. Um, and so, so, you know, rightfully so, sometimes that can come off as a little bit like, ugh, cringe, like eye roll. But a, a high vibing Leo or whoever this is, there's there's more to them that meets the eye. It's not just about this performative thing. I, and I mean, you can't really... I feel like Leos get a bad reputation for that. You can't fault them because it's it's like in, almost in their DNA. They're meant to entertain and perform and illuminate, bring light to their own sort of creative expression. The reason being is because they're going to influence those around them to do the same. So it's actually a very important kind of role, if you will, or archetype of the Zodiac because, you know, they are the sun, right? And that's their ruling planet. So the idea that all the other planets exist because of the sun, the light gives it warmth, it gives them nourishment, they all sort of orbit around the sun. Leos make a, you know, fantastic leaders, right? They have these qualities that are sort of mesmerizing or intriguing. So that's what I mean. I think this person has a lot more to offer. Um, I think this actually, I don't know if provide is the right word, whatever they're providing, it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know, money or a paycheck, but I think this person has a lot to offer you. So be careful that you're not writing them off based on very surface level judgments or, or I'm going to say superficiality, right? I think that's important, but you have to remember it goes both ways. You may be writing them off based on, on, you know, I don't know, that thing they said that one time, and I don't know, I, I see you changing your mind about where or with whom your passion lies. This is a soulmate card. This is a, a card of strong bonds and friendships. I love that they're, they're, they're sort of tethered together through time. I, I don't know, I think that's really beautiful. But look at their faces. Like, they just seem so happy and joyful. There's a sense of glee and excitement just to, to be with this person. Um, yeah, and, and I mean, you can spin this any direction you want if this isn't romantic, but I'll be honest with you, I'm having trouble seeing it as anything but romance. But that's just me, you know? This is your tarot reading too, so feel free to participate. Um, I like this. I like this. Let's do a couple of these. <clears throat> Oops. The eighth house, intimacy, and the north node. Perfect. Eclipse season, right? um destiny <laughs> i almost said something about that oh my gosh and look the tower um i don't hate this especially because of the message i gave you about um look at these i just want to put these together do you see those like shock waves um this is uh, mars energy right it's very much associated with um Aries and Scorpio, because uh, both of your your ancient rulers are Mars. Um, the tower can be shocking and unexpected, the same way the North Node kind of sitting in Taurus. It's not going to be right on top of planet Uranus, but it, it will have sort of that energy and that vibe. It's going to break your walls down. Something, yeah, if you were guarded or dismissive or unreachable, untouchable to this person, um, and I don't know, something about it, it, it breaks your defenses. It, it, it crumbles those guards or those walls you had up. I think this is good, right? And just to be clear, there's, there's no fear of safety or security. It's not like anyone's forcing you to do something that you don't want to do. That's not at all the vibe I'm getting here. Um, I'm going to say it's Scorpio, and earmuffs if you're not ready for this heavy-hitting truth. There's something about you that it needs to be quite literally lightened up a little bit. And there's nothing wrong with this card. In fact, it's beautiful energy, but you're taking something very seriously. And there's something kind of nice about this person. They remind you to laugh a little bit. They remind you to laugh at yourself. It's like this person brings back a sense of humor that I know you have in you. Scorpios are hilarious people. But again, you may have been put through the ringer in a past situation where something really broke you. And so it really... Um, you felt like you had to build up your defenses and not let people in. This person is almost like a, a savior in a way and that they show you that, I don't, I don't know, I don't want to attribute too much to this person, but it's like they show you that it, it's okay to let your guard down. It's okay to let people in again. I love this for you. I'm going to say it. Um, the North Node, Destiny, Soul School, Learning Curve, Fulfillment, Purpose, Maturing, Experience, Fruition, the North Star, Process, Development, Practice, Path, beacon, blossoming, becoming, integrity, journey. Are you with me on that? Like, how amazing does that feel? Um, and yeah, like, anytime we have a sort of eclipses, they're, they're big. They're like full moons on steroids, um, or new moons, as the case may be, too. Um, it, it will shake things up. I'm not saying it's all going to be comfortable, but you know what? This message is so awesome and high vibe, like... Fuck yeah, I said it. <laughs> and then eighth house, intimacy. So very connected to Scorpio, right? Uh, all about sort of the merging of two. If the opposite is the 
The second house, which is all about sort of your value and your worth, how much money you make. Eighth house has a lot to do with sort of joint finances and again, the merging of two. It comes after Libra, which is about sort of connection and contract. This is like, again, <laughs> connection and contracts on steroids. It's like, okay, we're going in on this for life, right? So this says investments, uh, intensity, contracts, sex, erotic capital, secrets, mysteries, obsessions, inheritance, kundalini energy, stalking, and the underworld. Don't be scared off by those those darker words, right? You're Scorpio. You can handle it. It is innate in you, right? <laughs> I love it. The tower and then the ten of swords. Interesting. So I, I wonder what this ten of swords is. I actually think this is an ending of perspective as seeing someone as fooling you or someone who's foolish or putting on a show. Again, the idea of illusions or I always get you, you roll your eyes at this person because, oh my God, they're such an attention whore. Like they just, they come into a room and it's all me, 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 me. That's a guise. That's, that's an act. Um, the thing is, sometimes I think those, those ideas of the performative, we, we do that as a defense. It's like you guys wear, a, you guys both have that thing about being defensive, but it, it's manifested in two different ways. And of course, this won't be every Scorpio's message, right? I'm just strictly reading these as the tarot cards. You have this sort of defenses up of, you know what, I'm just going to invest time and energy in myself because that's where I'm going to get pleasure and I'm going to see reward. You're right, but not at the sacrifice of blocking up other people out. This person, it's the opposite. This person has, it, they do, they have like a louder personality or a performative aspect or element to them. But I, I think it is a mask of, I'm going to say maybe a little bit of insecurity, but if anything, it's fear of asking for what they want. It's almost like this is how this person tests the waters with you, because if they come off as kind of goofy and not serious, if they say something like, hey, will you go out with me and you reject them? It, it enables them to sort of laugh it off and stay in that character, but on the inside, they would actually be quite hurt. I hope you understand what I'm saying. This performative aspect is a way to mask um, feelings of hurt or pain that they face because of rejection. That's what's really interesting, this, this parallel of stories, you know, the soulmate, the 1111, if you want. There's something similar that you guys have both been through in your past, which I feel like is why the universe is sort of coordinating this coming together, this merging, if you will, eighth house. Yeah, I, I actually love this. Um, I do. I, I like. I don't even mind that these are coming out together. Um, there's just something about this vibe of you guys offer each other uh, uh, healing at like a soul level. It, it comes together sort of unexpectedly because for both of you, it's to get like the mask has to fall. Those defensive, sorry, those defenses have to crumble. But this is the manifestation of something new um, because you should... The thing is, I think you've both put time and effort into showing the universe that that you do love yourself, that you do believe in yourself, and you're willing to put time and effort into being the best version of yourself. So there's this nice little gift that comes along. And anyway, up to you whether you want to accept it or not. Right, Scorpio? All right, really quick, we're going to pull just a couple on money. And it's going to be super short, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sort of at the end of my um, <laughs> space on my drive here. So I want to make sure it doesn't cut off. We doing okay? All right, here we go. Let's get uh, just a quick narrative. Let's uh, let's keep it short. Let's uh, in in the coming month or two about money finances. Anything I can tell Scorpio. Hopefully, I remember to timestamp this for people who just want the money. Really. That was a hell of a love reading, Scorpio. <laughs> Look out for those fire signs. They're coming at you. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, there we go. All right, Seven of Cups. So you have decisions to make. Um, listen to your emotions, trust your intuition with the cups. It's very much tied into those deep feelings you have. Sometimes it doesn't always make sense. I think with the seven of cups, it, just by nature, it, it, it will likely defy logic. There's some opportunity that comes along for you. And certainly there's the temptation, but with that, there's, there's a lot of emotions that come up when this job opportunity or this collaboration present. Some of it is fear. Some of it is desire. Some of it is fantasy of what could be. Some of it is sort of this, well, maybe do I need to be practical? Do I have the money? But all those, they're tied into your emotions. Is it fear? Is it excitement? Is it joy? Is it exhilaration? Is it shame? Is it courage? All, the, all those things you're feeling, you need to trust your gut. What is the biggest thing that comes through when you think about this idea? Tell me more about this. What is this decision that Scorpio has to make? Some of you may be allocating money in different areas of your life. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but that hopefully that'll make sense to some of you. The Ace of Pentacles in reverse. 
So some of you, you might be being asked to delay a decision until something becomes more provable or more tangible. If, if you're thinking of joining a startup, again, I want to reiterate, go with your gut. But if part of you is feeling a little bit shy about it, this might be saying, wait till you sort of see the, the productivity or the product that comes of this. It's like there's a seed in the ground, but I feel like it, has, it hasn't popped up yet. Um, some of you, this might just be saying that um, you need to be a little bit more patient. Uh, again, if you've already planted the seed and you're sort of nurturing the business, the company, the money opportunity, the Ace of Pentacles is a blessing, but it's in reverse. So I feel like it's saying it's delayed or something is stuck. It may not mature or hatch for, you know, a few more months, right? Because that's, that's sort of what I was asking about. What will this mature into, Ace of Pentacles, when it does come in? The Three of Wands. Uh, patience. It, this is more of like a long-term project. If you're thinking it's going to be sort of a, <laughs> that's a theme in your reading. If you're thinking it's going to be kind of like a fly-by-night operation, just get in and get out, you know, sell the thing, make the money. If you're a closer, Scorpio, my dad loves that. You know, he's a closer. Like, do you want it or not? This is not the type, that is not that. It, it, you can't be a closer on this because it just doesn't happen in that do you want it or not. It takes patience. You have to see. Your ships are coming in, though. It's positive, but I, I want to reiterate, and I know this is kind of like a, you know, wonky message, but it's going to take longer than you're expecting, but I do think it's saying you have to have faith. Because deep down in your gut, you already know. You already know if this is going to succeed or fail or whatever it is. What is on this ship, please? If the ships are coming in for Scorpio. But I, I, I always reiterate with, um, maybe not reiterate. I feel like I'm overusing that word. I always want to underscore that with the Three of Wands, because it's wands, it doesn't say just rest on your laurels and wait for stuff to happen. Wands indicate action. So if you've done everything you can and now it's just a matter of will the ships come in, you know, make good use of your time. Put that energy and action into some other area of life so that A, you're not focused on this, you know, taking forever, but also you're making good use of your time and energy and being able to manifest other things on the side or do you understand what I mean? Active waiting versus passive waiting. It's one. So you can't just sit there. You have to do something while you're waiting for your ships to come in. Some of you, it's visible. Like you can see the ships. It's just, it, yeah, it's patience. It's patience. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Perfect. I said, you guys already know the answer. You bet your ass you do with the high priestess. The high priestess is the card of intuition. Um, and, and whatever this endeavor is, be prepared for fluctuation and cycles. Uh, very much connected to uh, Cancerian energy and the moon, the changeable emotions. I mean, I'm almost wanting to say the changeable finances. If, if this is an independent thing or whatever, gig work, there's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be peaks and valleys. There's going to be months where it's very lucrative. And then there's going to be months where it sort of tapers off because it... Uh, the moon and the high priestess, it does have a lot to do with sort of uh, the public and what's around you. Um, and so, yeah, there's going to be times where it's in demand and times where people, it, where it's not in demand. You know, I, I don't know. That's sort of what I'm getting from that. Be patient. Again, almost this meditative state. Give it time. Um, don't make rash decisions. I think that's important. You need to sort of Filter the emotions that you're feeling from this because that's where the truth lies, but make sure it's not clouded by negative thoughts or negative judgment. Um, do your best to be unbiased of what the universe is trying to tell you through these sort of intuitive hits. Anything regarding, um, let's do one more card. Anything else I can tell Scorpio? What's something I may have missed or something Scorpio really needs to hear again from this reading regarding whatever this opportunity is. You may end up working with a cancer. Again, the only major arcana you have here is the high priestess. Oh, yeah, beautiful. All right, a lot of watery psychic energy. Again, trust your intuition. Um, make sure your cup runneth over for yourself. I feel like it's really important. Something about the body is coming through here. Make sure, uh, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. Your body is your temple, all those kind of things. Um, make sure you're taking care of your, your health and your wellness so that when this opportunity does come, it may actually come, sorry, when it arrives to you, there may be an expedited timeline or a process that has to take place very quickly with wands. So in the meantime, enjoy the stillness, enjoy the peace, enjoy the sort of internal balance or, or make that your focus in the coming month, health, 
diet, exercise, meditation, you know, take care of your mental health as well as your emotional health. I'm almost getting the idea of purging, getting rid of old emotions or old memories or old things from the past that you don't need anymore, making room in your life for new blessings. I think that's important too. Uh, Cancerian energy is very much tied to the house, um, land, property, past, ancestors. Some of you may be doing some spiritual work in the meantime, focusing on manifestations. You also might quite literally be clearing stuff out of your house. I'm not sure why that's important, but maybe it's just that, um, you know, symbolism, making space for what it is that you truly want and desire. Um, uh, you know, look around you, the things that, that surround you in your house, in your home, and wherever you're watching this, do you uh, project value onto them? Are those things you actually want and desire, or did you buy them for reasons, you know, <laughs> I don't know, random reasons, but things you don't need anymore? Where are you attached or holding on to things, possessions that you no longer need? I don't know why that's coming through, but anyway, that's a message. This could be a collaboration with a mother or, again, someone who has very strong water in their chart. Um, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. There could even be something in, in uh, entertaining in the home or some sort of... It could be a party, but uh, I don't know. What is it? it, it it's more to do with... Um, I'm getting at the idea of like banquets or parties or event planning or... Um, catering, something like nurturing, very Cancerian energy of, oh, you're not feeling good, let me serve you a meal. But that might actually be what you do for like a career. You may nurture people with uh, medicine or herbs or he something spiritual, it could even be with crystals or, yeah, healing people and their emotions, healing people from past traumas or I don't know what that is. All right, I'm going to leave it there because I'm rambling. Scorpio, this was a kick-ass reading. I am, I'm actually digging both. This one seems uh, very exciting to me. This is a reminder of patience and trusting your gut. Um, but I love both. You didn't get any of my like spooky, scary, uncomfortable cards. So good for you. Keep your vibe high, Scorpio. If this isn't your message, I leave it up to you to manifest whatever it is that you want and desire from this reading. Thanks for joining me today. Happy birthday. And I will see you very soon for more tarot. Bye, guys.